Hi everyone, welcome back to Digital Dreambox. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a basic low poly sword. Let's check it out. So this is the sword we'll be making today. It's a starter sword that's meant to teach you the fundamentals and get you on your way to making a variety of bladed weapons. This is a fun one, so let's jump right in and get started. All right, let's begin. We're going to be doing some free modeling today so we don't need a reference. Go up to your poly modeling shelf and add a plane into the scene. First thing I wanna do is I'm going to press T on the keyboard and drop these subdivisions. So I'm gonna choose one for the width and one for the height. There we go. And now let's rotate this. Uh, open up your channel box and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees in the X so that it's facing the front direction. So that Z axis. All right. And now let's tap the spacebar, hover your mouse over the front panel, tap the spacebar again. And what I want to do now is I'm going to move these edges and vertices to shape the blade. Um, let's open up the modeling toolkit. You have your component modes up here. So the edge selection is here, vertex selection is there. However, I like to use Maya's marking menu. So I'm going to hold down the right mouse button and choose edge. And what I'm going to do is select this edge, just move it up part way. And what I want to do now is extrude out another section. So to make the top of the blade, um, there's an extrude button here. However, um, if you hold down shift on the keyboard, hover over this arrow, you'll see um, extrude pop up. And now we just need to click and drag to use Maya's smart extrude, All right? Let go. And I'm going to do that one more time because I want the top of the blade to have a bit more form. There we go. And now while this edge is still selected, I'm actually going to go up here um, to edit mesh and collapse that edge. There we go. And the method we're um, using today is we're going to make the middle of the blade first, and then we'll extrude out the edge. So let's go into object mode first, and we want to give this the width that we want. So something like this is probably fine. And then what I'm going to do is uh, go into vertex mode, maybe grab these ones, move these down a little bit. I'll grab these ones, scale these ones out. And then these ones, I'll move down just a touch and then maybe scale these ones out. All right, let's take a look. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, maybe I'll bring these ones out a little bit more and I think that looks good. Okay, so now let's go into edge mode. Again, I'm using that marking menu. So I'm holding down the right mouse button, choose edge, double click this edge, then hold down a shift or control and unselect this edge. And then what we want to do is extrude. So we'll click extrude, and now we would need to adjust the offset. I'm going to hold down uh, control and drag so it doesn't slide too fast. And I'll stop just about here. I think that looks pretty good. And now what I want to do is go into vertex mode, box select these vertices, and you can see, actually it's a little bit hard to see, but it's not quite flat. So I'm going to go into my scale tool, click on this box, drag it to the middle, and flatten that out. All right, and now I want to scale that in. And I think if we're happy with the heights and the proportions, uh, we can start making the guard. Um, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll just make this a little bit wider. There we go. Let's go back to our perspective view. And now what I want to do with this is go into face mode and I want to give this some dimension, so some thickness. So I'm going to select these three faces I'm holding down shift to add to the selection and I'm going to go into my move tool and just pull this out a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good like that. That should be fine. Um, now what we want to do is we want to mirror this and when we mirror, we want to know which direction we're mirroring in. So this is facing in the Z axis and this arrow is pointing this way, which means this side is positive. So we'll be mirroring in the negative Z. All right, let's go into object mode, select this. And what I want to do is uh, click the mirror button. There's one up here. And you can see that it got a little bit confused. Let's change the axis to Z. There we go. And now um, it looks pretty good, but at the bottom, you can see that um, the vertices have collapsed and they're, they've merged, the middle ones have merged into each other. We don't want that. And that's because the merge threshold is too high. So let's uh, change this to like 0.1 and that should fix that. 
And if we want to be sure that the vertices on the edge are merged, let's go into vertex mode, box select this one, and make sure this says one. If you don't have the poly count uh, display, it's under display, heads up display, and poly count. All right. Uh, next, let's make the guard of the sword. So the rain guard or cross guard, whatever you want to call it. Uh, let's go into edge mode. And what I want to do is double click this edge, click on my extrude. And then what I want to do is I'm not going to use a thickness or tr uh, translate. If I change these, I just want to show you something real fast. You can see that it hasn't extruded flat. And we want to be in control of that when we can, right? So let's go back to here, just undo that. What we want to do is scale it um, out um, in the world axis. So we can click this one here. That'll bring up this, right? And then we can click this box if we want, and we can just scale this out. If I scale out really far and go back to here, you can see it's flat, right? But what we'll do is we'll just bring this in. Oops. And I think something like that is pretty good. Um, let's check with the rest of the blade. Maybe a touch uh, smaller. There you go. There you go. And now I want to extrude it again. We just extruded the windows right here. So we can press G to repeat. And then I'm just going to drag this arrow down. And that will be the height of the guard. And I think that looks fine. Um, next, I want to fill this hole at the bottom. So go to Mesh, Fill Hole. And now um, let's go into object mode, take a look at it. Looks pretty good. And now let's extrude out the side sections. We'll be turning on symmetry for this. And X symmetry is running this way. So let's go to uh, symmetry. We could use object X or world X in this case, just because we haven't really moved our blade. And what I'm going to do is maybe use a world X. All right. Let's go into face mode. And I'm going to select this face and this one. And then what I want to do is click extrude. And then what I can do is press W to go to my move tool and just extrude this out a little bit. All right. And I want to flatten that, so I'm going to press R to scale that in. And I'm going to scale it in this way as well. And now I just want to give it a rotate. All right, I think that looks pretty good like that. Um, I'll probably move it in just a touch. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Um, now let's extrude it one more time. And this time I'm just going to pull this arrow up here and I'm going to go into my scale tool again and I'm going to probably scale it in this way a little bit and this way a little bit as well. So, Right, I think that looks pretty good. What I'll do though is probably rotate a bit more and move it out this way just a touch just to give it a little bit of a flare out. Okay. And I probably want to scale it in just a little bit more this way. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Let's work on the grip of the sword now. We'll go into face mode. Let's turn off symmetry first. Let's go into face mode. We'll select this face and I want to offset that. So let's click extrude and let's change the offset. And I'll probably bring it in a little bit more and then I'll scale it in by clicking this box and just bring it in this way. Right. And if we want, what we can do is go into vertex mode, select these ones, and maybe bring these in a little bit. Right. I think that looks pretty good like that. All right, so now what I wanna do is um, extrude it again. So click extrude. We'll drag this down. And if we want, we could use the smart extrude for making the pommel, so that bottom of the sword. And this will be a sh um, this is a shorter style sword, so I'll keep the grip not too long. It's a one-handed weapon. We'll pretend. And then with this, what I'll do is hold down. Uh, sir, sorry, first go into your scale tool. Hold down shift. We'll extrude out a little bit. And I'll probably go into my move tool, move this down a little bit. And then I'm going to hold down shift again, drag this down. And I'll want to uh, maybe uh, bevel that bottom. So let's click bevel. 
and we'll play the fraction just a little bit to make it a little more of a point at the bottom. All right, and to give this sword a bit more form, what I'm going to do is add a couple edge loops here. So let's um, grab our multi-cut tool, which is here, hold down control. I'm going to uh, click here and here, and then go into vertex mode. So press Q to go to your select tool, hold down the right mouse button, choose vertex, box select these ones, and then I would just want to scale this in a little bit. Makes it a little more interesting. There we go. And maybe I'll move it up just a touch as well. Right, and there we go. We're almost done. Um, this sword, we just need to harden these edges. So um, go up here to mesh display, harden edge. And one more thing before I finish off, most of the time these um, props are for mobile games or um, games that are fairly efficient, really depends, right? But if you're being pretty efficient with geometry, you'll probably wanna go in and maybe merge some of these vertices um, to here. Um, any ones that won't change the form of it, right? Um, but for something like this, it's pretty low already. It's fine for uh, this. Just want to mention that. And yeah, so here is our low poly sword. All right, so now you're on your way to making some great low poly swords. Uh, that wraps it up for this one, so we'll see you in the next. This has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.